is AEDT 1170U Psychological Foundations and Digital Technologies. This is Module 6, Video 6.1, Transformational Learning Theory. Here are the guiding questions for this video. How is transformational learning different than reformational learning? What are some of the key concepts in transformative learning? And why do you think transformative learning is an important part of the psychology of adult learning in an online environment? Transformation refers to the process of affecting a change in our frame of reference. A full change, not just reforming behavior, but changing where we never go back to the way we were before. Adults tend to have a really coherent body of experience that defines their world, and this can selectively limit and shape our perceptions of our abilities, our confidence, or the world in general. So transformative learning is a really dramatic and fundamental change in the foundations of the way we see the world in which we live. Transformational learning develops an autonomous, independent kind of thinking where we become more receptive to change, changes in ourselves and our perspectives as we go along. It allows us to not learn from authority such as a teacher-directed or a therapist-driven experience or a coach-led top-down kind of business model but to understand the meaning in our experience and to choose the kind of knowledge that we want to know. We can start to analyze critically what happens to us and make our own interpretations rather than acting on what other people say is important. Unlike informational or reformational learning, where we extend our already established cognitive capacities, in other words, we just extend more of what we know of the same, transformation expands us into new terrain. Reformation is different than transformation because reform implies changing one thing or pattern where there's always a risk of returning to a previous state of knowledge or a previous state of being, whereas transforming means a fundamental change in the roots of how you look at things. Persig states that this way of thinking refers to something like root expansion, which is more lateral, and rather than merely extending the branches of what we know, we need to extend the roots of what we know. Transformation refers to our frames of reference, and these have a cognitive, cognitive, or an emotional component. In the first place, we tend to have some certain habits of mind, ways of thinking that are broad and abstract, that have a long historical place in our way of learning. And secondly, we talk about points of view. That's just consolidation of our habits to a particular belief, judgment, or value. Like I've learned that I always drive this way, or I like this kind of course and not that kind of course. Here are some of the key concepts in transformative learning. First of all, our experience and that rich reservoir biography that you bring to the experience is integral to how the learning will unfold for you. And adults tend to bring a real depth and breadth to this kind of learning process because they have to situate it in their own personal lives we've talked about this in other modules. That level of experience can come in many different dimensions. Experience can be in the here and now, what's happening as you're listening to this video, or it could be a memory involving us emotionally, spiritually, mentally, and socially on all kinds of levels. So experience doesn't have to be temporal or just in the time that we're in right now. An example of this might be if you had a bad learning experience in the past or if you got bitten by an animal and you decided that you just never will like that kind of animal. That would be experiencing from our past. Another key concept in transformative learning is the power of critical reflection. This means we have an objective lens through which we're looking at our learning. Effective learning does not necessarily follow a positive experience, but if we reflect on that experience, then we can take the learning out of the experience. Mesro refers to three types of reflection on the content and the process and the premise. Schoen, who talks a lot about reflection in professional development, refers to two terms, reflection in and reflection on action. Reflection in being us reflecting while the action is happening in time and reflection on meaning we sit down later on and look back on what's happened to take the learning out of the experience. Both of these theorists talk about learning from transformation and learning by the experience as it's happening to us. The next key concept in transformative learning is development. 
and that is that individual levels of development, it's inherent and in and an outcome of the process. So when we're within the process, we develop based on things like our personality, our motivation, our experience, and our readiness to learn. We can become better thinkers as our individual and cognitive development evolves, so we can learn to take more out of the experience as it's happening to us. Meser says that perspective transformation is the central process of adult development. If you think back on your own life, there's probably been some incidents where a change in your perspective caused a significant shift in how you viewed the world or how you viewed what was happening to you. And this can be triggered by all sorts of things, life changes, changes in education, and unanticipated changes as well. The next key concept for transformative learning is context. Mesro's theories were developed initially on women returning to work, and that tends to uncritically reflect the values of the dominant culture, which at the time is white, male, middle class. But we need to understand the context of this and think really globally and beyond culture and gender. An individual's biography and sociocultural background really shapes the nature of how we have experienced the transformation in our learning. When we studied personality and also emotions, stress, and health, we refer to the fact that individuals respond to the same incident differently. We have a different visceral response, a different emotional reaction, and even the same incident can affect us differently at a different time and place. So Taylor refers to this and says the same experience can transform one individual but not another. Think how some major life events uh, have shaped the adults around you or other people in your life and at some point there's a choice point where they decide how it's going to affect them, whether they're, whether they're going to take the learning forward and change or whether they're going to repeat old habits. Another key concept in transformative learning is rationality and affect, and we've talked about this as well when we spoke about emotions, logic versus emotion. Mesro tends to have an over-reliance on rationality as the means of affecting transformation, and that emphasis on logic and the intellectual mind, the left brain thinking, if you can make those connections from other modules, is that rationality is kind of a westernized concept. Um, historically, we talked about the Enlightenment and the mind-body split that Descartes talked about. So we really are in a Western concept that rationality is a superior way of thinking, which is a, a big cultural bias. This idea that emotions and thinking are separate and that emotions are sort of less evolved is very Westernized. Taylor, though, emphasizes the roles of emotion, intuition, imagination, and feelings in transformative learning. That we can't separate ourselves out as mind versus body, but that we operate together as whole beings. And we'll talk a little bit more about this when we get into spirituality and how technology has changed our views on that. What's the role of relationships in transformative learning? Well, I think it's key, and I think relationships are the foundation of any good learning experience. The relationships you have with your colleagues, your peers, with your teachers, and the relationship you have with yourself. How much self-trust do you have to take some risks and make some mistakes? As Taylor said, closely tied to the role of emotions and feelings is this role of having meaningful relationships and ways of knowing that relate to other people. Participants can experience transformative learning through relationship and dialogue. That's from Miriam, who does a lot of work in adult learning. And this is why we have the tutorial session where you are speaking uh, in an Adobe environment and you have a chance to talk with your colleagues. And that is a big part of taking in their opinions. And sometimes they can change your mind on certain things and really affect your learning. The next concept that's important for transformative learning is social action. Although it's still controversial, uh, Mesro, who was a proponent of transformational learning, was pr um, criticized for focusing too much on individuals um, at the expense of you know, the social emancipatory change part of transformational learning. But an individual's perspective transformation can also result in social action. You know, we see this in the individual changes that we can do in our own lives and that everybody's uh, action uh, culminates in, in larger change for everyone. Prairie and Mesro have romanticized the social change process.
let's reflect on this because these are a lot of big terms in transformative learning. Which ones of the key concept in transformative learning is most important to you in your teaching or work? And what is the evidence that you have of this? For example, is the relational part the most important? Is learning from experience the most important? Do you actually do critical reflection in your work or your life so that you can put things in perspective? And do you accept that your development is going to be different than someone else's development? Or are you trying to get to a certain benchmark? What's the context of your learning? Or do you sort of debate between rationality and emotion as to which one is most important in the role of your work and learning? Here are the synthesis questions for this video. Review the differences that you've learned between informational learning, reformational learning, and transformational learning. Which one is most challenging for you? Sometimes we like to revert back to where it's just easy to know the facts and spit those back to the teacher and then we get a result. And transformational learning is a lot bigger because it expects you to be part of the process, um, mind, body, and spirit together. What key concepts of transformational learning did you experience in this program? Or how can I, as a facilitator, help you to transform your learning a little bit better? And what elements might be missing from your learning program? For example, reflection. In this busy, busy world, we often don't take time out to think about what's happening or what we've learned and to put it in proper context. I look forward to hearing your discussions and tutorials.